Blessed and pleasant. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is Friday, the 12th day of August, and I'm not even going to mention how quickly August has flown by. I mean, two weeks, just like that by Sunday. Done, done, done. It's a beautiful day here in lovely Dangriga. The birds are singing. I see blue skies, some puffy clouds, but not too gray, more white than gray. Sun coming over the horizon, all nice and orange. I wish you were here to see it. I hope you're having a beautiful day where you are as well. We're going to kick things off this lovely Friday morning to take us into the weekend with one entitled, God is love, let heaven adore him. Let's have a listen.
a beautiful one there entitled God is Love. And let's see if I could make it happen where I get our words back here on screen. And for some reason, one of my light went off. I have no idea. I'm going to check that in a little while here. But first, let me get my words here up on screen. I think we might have had a small power surge there on my end just now. Mm -hmm. So let's do that again and see what's going on here. Oh, the blackout, the power, the electricity has gone where I am. Good grief. All right, we'll continue and go as far as we can with this while we still have electricity. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Words from John chapter 4 verse 23. If you are following along in your CPWI Books of Common Prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God by whose grace we are alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of joy in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 102, and using a previously recorded version of the psalm, reading for us is Miss Cheyenne Williams. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 102, verses 1 to 28. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days drift away like smoke, and my bones are hot as burning coals. My heart is smitten like grass and withered, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the voice of my groaning, I am but skin and bones. I have become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake and groan. I am like a sparrow, lonely on a housetop. My enemies revile me all day long, and those who scoff at me have taken an oath against me. For I have eaten ashes for bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and wrath, you have lifted me up and thrown me away. 
My days pass like a shadow, and I wither like the grass. But you, O Lord, endure forever, and your name from age to age. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to have mercy upon her. Indeed, the appointed time has come. For your servants love her very rubble, and are moved to pity, even for her dust. The nations shall fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion, and his glory will appear. He will look with favor upon the prayer of the homeless. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation, so that people yet unborn may praise the Lord. For the Lord looked down from his holy place on high. From the heavens he beheld the earth, that he might hear the groan of the captive and set free those condemned to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together, and the kingdoms also, to serve the Lord. He has brought down my strength before time. He has shortened the number of my days. And I said, O oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my years. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. They shall wear out like a garment. As clothing, you will change them, and they shall be changed. But you are always the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servants shall continue, and their offspring shall stand fast in your sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall ever be. Amen. We want to thank Ms. Cheyenne for leading us in the reading of the psalm for this morning. Our second canticle for today is canticle number 10, the second song of Isaiah, based on Isaiah 55, verse 6 through Isaiah 55, verse 6 through to 15, that should be. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we have our Bible reading, and our Bible reading comes from the Old Testament book of Judges, chapter 14, verse 20, through to chapter 15, verse 20. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Judges, chapter 14, reading from verse 20 through to chapter 15, verse 20. And Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. After a while, at the time of the wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife, bringing along a kid. He said, I want to go into my wife's room. But her father would not allow him to go in. Her father says, 
I was sure that you had rejected her, so I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister prettier than she? Why not take her instead? Samson said to them, This time, when I do mischief to the Philistines, I will be without blame. So Samson went and caught three hundred foxes and took some torches and he turned the fox tail to tail and put a torch between each pair of tails. When he had set fire to the torches, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up the shock and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and olive groves. Then the Philistines asked, Who has done this? And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Tim Timnite, because he has taken Samson's wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father. Samson said to them, If this is what you do, I swear I will not stop until I have taken revenge on you. He struck them down hip and thigh with great slaughter, and he went down and stayed in the cleft of the rock at Etam. Then, the Philistines came out and encamped in Judah and made a raid on Leha. The men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? They said, We have come up to bind Samson to do to him as he did to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cliff of the rock at Etam, and they said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then have you done to us? And he replied, As they did to me, so I have done to them. They said to him, We have come down to bind you, so that we may give you into the hands of the Philistines. Samson answered them, Swear to me that you yourself will not attack me. They said to him, No, we will only bind you and give you into their hands. We will not kill you. So they bounded him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting out to meet him, and the Spirit of the Lord rushed on him, and the ropes that were on his arm became like flax that had caught fire, and his bonds melted off his hands. Then he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached down and took it, and with it killed a thousand men. And Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. When he had finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, and that place was called Ramath Lehi. By then, he was very thirsty, and he called on the Lord, saying, You have granted this great victory by the hand of your servant. Am I now to die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? So God split open the hollow place that is at Lehi, and water came out from it. When he drank, his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore it was named en which is at Lehi to this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistine twenty years. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If we get back to the beginning of the reading, and I apologize, for some reason my computer is working slow this morning and Facebook seems to be giving a little bit of trouble. I hope you all can hear me well. Um, but if we get back to the beginning of the reading, we are looking at Judges chapter 14, verse 20, through to Judges chapter 15, verse 20. And man, oh man, this story of Samson, boy, let me tell you, Samson, <laughs> you heard yesterday, he had had this instance where he had gone and he was marrying this woman he was not supposed to, a Philistine woman, and there he had made a riddle for them. And we spoke of how Samson had been unfaithful to God and unfaithful to his vow as a Nazarite by doing things like, one, marrying the Philistine woman, two, eating, um, um, killing the lion, 
and, and leaving the carcass there. Three, coming back, finding the carcass and eating honey out of it, lying to his parents and trying to trick the Philistines with riddles in order to gain material possessions for himself. And all of this was not pleasing in the sight of God, but yet God allowed it because what is going to happen is the Lord is going to use Samson in order to destroy the Philistines. And well, after Samson was tricked, yes, and it's interesting because Samson was tricked yesterday, but Samson was tricked because they threatened his wife. They came to his wife and said to his wife, you see, Ono, Ono bring this this Israelite man here to come and brock we because he has made a bet and this bet is definitely going to cause us to lose because we can't give the answer to this riddle. And she, being a good wife, nagged and pleaded and nag and pleaded for seven days. And the nagging and pleading finally got to Samson. And so Samson gave her the answer to the riddle, which she took back to the men from her community. And she did it more than likely to save her father's house because that was where the threat was. The threat was, we're going to burn down your house for sure. And she probably did it to save her kinfolk. But in trying to save her kinfolk, she betrayed her husband. Hindsight is twenty twenty, so we could say she could have easily gone to her husband and said to her husband, this is the threat they have made against me and it would have been different. Yes? But that was not the case. And Samson, of course, became angered and Samson would have said some terrible things with regards to his wife. And um, yeah, yeah, he got vexed. Hmm? He got vexed. And what he said was, you know what? Had you not, had my wife not been deceived by you and fail marriage is what it is had my wife not been deceived by you you would never have figured this out i will pay you but then you know that you would go you are going to have to punish for this and mm -hmm. samson's wife oof. ah boy what happened after she did this had you not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. And Samson used this proverb to show his anger and his bitterness and the fact that he felt manipulated and, and betrayed. Yes, Samson's wife had won what she wanted through manipulation, but she lost her husband. And he killed 30 of their men, took the clothes and gave the clothes back to these ones who had answered the riddles. And the reading starts this morning with Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been the des best man. So Samson won the battle by beating them up and giving them their own stuff. But his wife left him and went with his best man. Whether it was her decision, whether it was the decision of the father who had to agree to all of these things, listen, it was bad. And yesterday I spoke about the fact that I really would have wanted to counsel them. You know? I mean, Samson was not at fault for guarding his heart against falling in love with a woman he had no business to fall in love with in the first place. He was at fault, yes, for not founding the marriage on God's principles. He was also at fault for not responding to his wife's manipulations with love free from anger. At the same time, Samson's wife, of course, was at fault siding with others against her husband should never be the case. She was at fault for not telling her husband what the true problem was, at fault for manipulating the man and being such a bother until she got to her own way. But most of all, she was at fault for giving up on her marriage. Samson didn't leave her. She left him. She went with his companion. She was given to his companion. She could have rebelled and probably faced all kinds of difficulties in her family, but she could have rebelled and gone to her husband and then acknowledge and say, you know what? I lied to you because they forced me. Now they're trying to give me away to your best friend. The truth is, no matter what the problems in a relationship are, what God commands us most of all to do is not to give up. Yes, whether it is a relationship of marriage, whether it's a relationship of friendship, what we got to do is bring those circumstances before God. Now, this is not advice for you to stay in an abusive situation. I would have advised Samson, boy, that woman ain't good for you. Bonks. You understand? It's not advice to stay in a difficult situation or in an abusive situation. It's an advice to take even your difficult situations to God in order that he could guide you as to how and where you're supposed to be moving. That's it. And Samson didn't seem to understand this. 
And so the whole chapter 14 ends with Samson in great heartaches. And he's going to, of course, do what Samson does best. He's going to retaliate because that's what we do. Hurt people, hurt people. If I am hurting, my first reaction is to take vengeance and to retaliate to cause hurt too. And Samson's rage at discovering that his wife was given to another was more than the rage he felt knowing that his wife betrayed him. He didn't, I mean, he was hurt by the betrayal of, of, of her with her people in, in, in tricking him to give the answer the riddle. But he was even more wounded when he realized, you know what? <laughs> they give him a wife. My wife is no longer my wife. And remember, he had gone through plenty with his parents. He had broken so many vows and promises in order to be with this woman. And then in the end, the woman just up and gone. Mm. Mm. I could see and feel Samson's pain. I could. I really can. And what happens? He goes and he went to visit his wife after the wheat harvest. So some time has passed. And he takes with him a young kid, yes, as an offering. Goes to his father-in-law and says to his father-in-law, listen, I want to go into my wife's room. This is my wife. I want to spend time with my wife as a husband is supposed to. And the response of the father-in-law who did not allow him was, I really thought that you had thoroughly hit her. And it's hard to know why Samson's father-in-law thought Samson would hate his wife. Perhaps this was just an excuse to explain why he did what he did because he had to approve the giving away. Or perhaps Samson's Philistine's wife had poisoned her father's opinion against him. Perhaps the fact that Samson reacted so negatively to the betrayal was what was interpreted as, you know what, he really doesn't like her. And Samson, even though angry with his wife and angry with his wife's father, the real root of the problem was the bad choices that Samson was making in love. Hmm. You see me? I never want to be so in love that I can't see God, that I can't decipher for myself or discern for myself where things go wrong. Samson had no business allowing himself to fall in love with this ungodly pagan woman in the first place. Eh? Guide or protect your heart with all diligence from out of it springs the issues of life. Failure to guide your heart can result in great trouble. Proverbs 4.23 Guide your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. No man. You know? And when he is told you can't be with your wife, Samson go, eh uh -huh. this is how you feel. Okay, know that. What I'm about to do, whatever mischief that is, I will not be to blame because you people are provoking me to this. And God again uses Samson's ungodly anger for his purpose. Yes, it doesn't justify Samson's anger, but it shows the glory and the power of God to use any and all things for his purpose. And Samson strikes out against the Philistine. He burns their crops. He catches. Now, this is impressive. Yes, and it's amazing the things love will make you do, but it is equally amazing and absolutely scary. Yes, what anger and vengeance can make you do. Samson went and he caught 300 foxes. Now, let me tell you, catch one fox is difficult. Catch five fox is extremely hard. Catch 300, my goodness. The man catch 300 fox and he tied them tail to tail. And then he took torches and tied to the tail of the two fox. Yeah. And at the tail of the two foxes, he lit this torch and then let the foxes go. And of course, the foxes are going to run. They are already afraid. They are in captivity. They are already afraid. Their tails are tied together. Worse now, there is fire burning on the hind parts. And the foxes just ran through the standing grain of the Philistine. So the crops in the field and whatever they had gathered, Samson strategically let go the fox to burn everything, everything. And his act seems kind of like a juvenile delinquent. But you know what? God used it for his purpose to fight against the Philistines. And that's the thing that we need to remember. We need to remember that Samson is going through all of this and Samson is doing all of this as bad as it is, but the fulfilling of the purpose of God is still being done through it. Hmm? And let me tell you, 
Let me tell you. The fellow was hurt, man. And what happened? The Philistines, of course, are going to retaliate. Mahatma Gandhi said, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. But that is how most people see it. You do me something, I will do you something. Tit for tat, butter for fish. We will, if you do me, I won't do you. Hmm? Do for do, that is what they call it. Yes? And uh, the men of the city got up when they saw all of this and they, they went out into the vineyards and they went out into the, into the groves and they said, who could have done this? And of course, they knew it was Samson. And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of Timite, the Timite, hmm? because he has taken Samson's wife and given her to his companion. And then, listen, let me tell you, boy, love. And so they gathered together the people, the Philistines people, turned against the same woman who had lost faith from her husband for them. They turned against her and they burned her and her father because they had brought this wickedness and this damage upon the community. And men, God used all of this to advance his plan for Israel, for the redemption of Israel. And yet because of Samson's disobedience, it's all happening at a great personal cost for Samson. He has lost his wife in terms of her betraying him, he lost her again in terms of her going to live with another man. And in the end, he lost her completely when they burned her up with, with her father and her father's possessions. Samson was just not winning. He was not winning any at all. As a matter of fact, he kept losing more and more. And the woman that caused all of this that he's fighting so hard for, still not in the end. And this, of course, hmm? The death of his wife. I mean, you cause my wife to trick me. You take away my wife from me. And then in the end, these people kill my wife. His vengeance. I will surely take vengeance on you. And after that, I will cease. Yeah, I will not stop until I have taken revenge on you. And he struck down the Philistines, hip and tie with a great slaughter, and then went to hide. And the Philistines came out. And they went up against Judah because they said, well, this is one of these people's men. He belonged to you. So we come for him. And of course, the people of Judah, why don't you come fight it we for? What we do you? Nothing. We come forget Samson. He belongs to you. And the people of Israel and Judah knew that they couldn't just go to Samson and try to take him over. So they went with a plan. And the plan was, listen. These people rule it over us. Why have you bring now this fight to our doorstep when it has nothing to do to us? And Samson's response was simple. As they have done to me, whoops, I have done to them. Easy, easy, easy. And you know what? He killed a thousand Philistines. That's why he was hiding in the cliff of the rock. He had no family. And nobody he could trust. He had to live like a fugitive alone in a cave. And the men of Judah, when they went to him, knew that if he could kill a thousand men, if he could capture 300 bucks, no sense we try to fight with him. The fact that soldiers from the tribe of Judah gave up Samson to the Philistine showed just how much they were under oppression from the Philistine. They would rather please the oppressor than support the man who was there to deliver them. And it's, it's strange because the enemy of my enemy is my friend, no? Isn't that what they say? The Philistines were the enemy. But they were so afraid of the Philistines that they were willing to give up Samson. Instead of they say, Samson, you just beat up a thousand men by yourself, brother. We are here to overthrow the Philistines. You have done this. They didn't think of that. And Samson didn't want to hear or recognize that the Philistines ruled it over us. Samson just was anger. He was angered and he was hurt. As far as he was concerned, the Philistines should not rule over anybody. They should all die for what they had done to him. And he says to the people who came to arrest him, All right, swear to me that you yourself will not attack me. And it's interesting that he would say this because it's almost like he's saying, Okay, you not do me nothing, but if you try beat me up, I can't do you nothing. Yes? But just not beat me. Hand me over today. It's like he was plotting in his mind what he was about to do. 
Hmm? And they promise him, no, we're not going to hurt you. We're just going to bind your hand and your foot and hand you over to the people. And that's what they did. He surrendered himself. It seems that he submitted to this. Assuming that this was true, it showed great faith on Samson's part in his men that they wouldn't hurt him. But it also shows his willingness to put himself in a difficult position, trusting that he would be able to overcome it. Because I am sure he is thinking, on a time your hand and foot and give me to their Philistines. Make her get close to them, make them think that they are winning, get them comfortable, and then attack ye. That's what we're going to do. And that's exactly what he did. Yes, they put ropes on him, brought him out of the rock. And the Philistines came out shouting to meet him. And Samson, the spirit of the Lord, rushed on him and Samson get vexed all over again. Whoops, all over again. And then what happened? He picks up the jawbone, a fresh jawbone of a donkey. So here again, he breaks the rules. A fresh jawbone of a donkey means that this donkey recently died. He's touching the dead carcass of this thing. He gets so angry, his muscles broke through. He broke through the reins and the ropes that held him. Picked up this defiled thing and started to whap up man left, right, and center. Yes? And a thousand men. An additional thousand men. Hmm? I mean, Samson was a one-man army against the Philistines. Judging, I mean, the other judges of Israel led armies of hundreds and thousands of people against their enemies in battle. But Samson, as a judge over Israel, fellow was unique. Fellow didn't take nobody into battle with him. Fellow just, his anger motivated him and what he did. He just went about left, right, and center, licking people down. Bad man a bad man, no? <laughs> bad man a bad man. That's what Samson was. He was big, he was bad, he was bold, and he had an agenda. I will hurt the people who continue to hurt me. And that's what he did. That's what he did. And with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, the Bible says. Samson's bold declaration of victory has kind of a poetic touch, you know. With the jawbone of a donkey, I have piled them up in masses, heap upon heap. And when he finished, he was tired. Tired. And so tired, he was thirsty. And he looks up to God and he says, okay, you have granted me this great victory over these thousands of people. And now I will die of thirst because I am tired. Come on. That ain't right. <laughs> and I love, I love that even in all the foolishness he's doing, Samson still talks to God when it suits him. Which kind of reminds me of us. We don't always talk to God when God is waiting to hear from us. We talk to God when we think we're supposed to. Hmm? And <laughs> Samson said to God, look, big man me, you know, big man me just finished beat up thousands and hundreds. And thirsty is what is going to make me pass out and die here after I do all of this. And look at how the Lord showed up. And that's how our reading ends. Yeah? God split open a hollow place, just like he did in the wilderness for his people. He break open a rock and he caused water to come forth. And Samson drink and his spirit returned. He was revived, ready to kill more man. Interesting, huh? That in the midst of all the wrong that Samson was doing, the will of God was being fulfilled. That in the midst of being so disobedient, the Lord still provided for Samson. Gave him water from the cliff of a rock. That's how far the, 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 the provision was. And it gives me courage that even when I do stupidness, even when I'm not as obedient as I'm supposed to be, God still wants to bless me and still blesses me. Even when I'm not doing what is according to his will. When you think about how many blessings each person gets to be awake this day is a blessing. To be able to hear, see, think, feel, taste, feel, love is a blessing. And what we do if we deserve it? More often than not, not even a thank you for what we have. But even though we are lost and sometimes lost in our own anger, lost in our own hurt, lost in our own greed, even though we are lost, the Lord does not stop loving us. He does not stop caring for us. He didn't when it came to Samson. He hasn't when it comes to us. 
And it should be that this should require that we be faithful unto him, recognizing that this is how he is and this is who he is. But no, instead, we simply continue to walk around in 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 all kinds of states of disobedience and are not doing God's will. Hmm? No, man. No. And Samson, as we know, and we're probably not going to see, well, we're not going to see him tomorrow. And maybe when we come back on Monday, the story of Samson will be gone. But continue to read this book of Judges and the story of Samson. Because you know how it's going to end. Samson will become the first suicide or terrorist um, suicide bomber. He's not going to use bombs in plane, but he's going to be captured. He's going to be taken. They're going to gouge his eyes out. He will be tied up in pillars and right there, his final act of strength, even then, is going to be to destroy as many Philistines as he can. That was the purpose he was created for, to deliver Israel out of it. But before we get there, after all he had done, look at verse 20. After all he had done, the potential and the purpose that God made him for to judge and deliver Israel is what came to fruition. Because the man judged over Philistine, over the, over the, in the days of the Philistine, he judged over Israel for 20 years. As wild and as not, I mean, God provides for Solomon, Solomon, Samson miraculously, and then gives him a place from which to lead his people. It's interesting. We got to be of good faith. We got to be fine, fighting warriors for the cause of Christ, not for our own reasons. It's not about doing as much as we can do to look good for us. But more so, unlike Samson, it is doing as much as we could do, being used by God for the glory of his kingdom. Hold on to your anger. Hold on to your faith. Deliver yourself up to God and allow him to work in and through you. Amen. Samson boy. Samson, Samson, Samson boy. <laughs> Let us continue with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And if you see me looking down, it's because I'm making sure I'm in the right spot because my computer is gl glitching. Yeah, that's the word. It's glitching. So, let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. Together we profess our faith, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us be bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all peoples. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us, and through us, your will may be done. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for proper 14. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a call it for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is, well, yesterday was Miss Christine Cuddle and Deacon Rudolph Dawson. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Arlene Johnson and Mr. Andrew Brown. Celebrating a birthday on Saturday is Mr. Ashton Webster, Miss Terry Longford, Reverend Desiree Johnson, Mr. Ashton Tasha, Mr. Linsford Vasado, Mr. Andy Reed. Mr. Tamar Viergrand, Mr. Alex Carrington, and Ms. Hyacinth Bennett. We wish and pray that you have a blessed and beautiful birthday. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to pray and give God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember in our prayers... Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Marilyn. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Janet, and Miss Nina and Miss Beryl. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie. Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Il and Reverend Ilona. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Florence, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss Lashan, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, and Miss Laverne. We remember and pray for Miss Kimberly, Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta. Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Janice, Miss Yolanda, Miss Glenda, and Miss Joyce. In our prayers, we continue to pray for Miss Esme, Miss Helen, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvarine, Miss Daphne, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Kim. We continue to remember and pray for Miss Laverne, Miss Mona. Miss Derla, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Gladys, Miss Ishme, Miss Elva, Miss Doreen. We pray for Miss Lisa and we pray for Miss Veroline, Miss Abelina, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alir, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Bernadine. Miss Fiona, Miss Kelea, Miss Caroline, Miss Shelma Dean, Miss Sandra, Miss Sheila, Miss Gretel, Miss Michelle, Miss Dominic, and Miss Pat. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry. Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, and Mr. Brindell. We remember and pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Tony. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, 
Father Jerry's, Father Constancio. We pray for Mr. Ian, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Basso. We pray for Mr. Wilmot, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, and Bishop Larry. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for comfort and peace for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Micah, Miguel. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Roxane Hill. We remember and pray for the family of Mr. Alfredo Gongora, the family of Mr. Desmond Brigal, the family of Miss Jovita Rosado, and the family of Miss Jovita Palacio. We pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon all those who are grieving at this time, for those who recently laid a loved one to rest, and for those who are preparing to lay a loved one to rest. We ask that God's comfort and peace be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for our loved ones who are far away from us. We continue to remember and pray for our students, remembering Tammy, Marissa, Ashley, Anwa, Brittany, Karia, Karina, Ria, Kai, Courtney, Akua, Elton, and Arian. We remember our loved ones in the military. We pray for Jason, Emil, Jade, Prince, Gavin, Charles, Barry, Sam, Keishan, and Alvin. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the protection and enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. Praying for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Sho Green, Arana, Joseph, Lawrence, Sosa, and Koyar. We pray for our nurses. Praying for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Orel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We continue in our prayers to pray for persons who are infected with COVID-19, praying for a cure or a vaccine to continue to be readily available, praying for those in the various forms of isolation, praying for those who offer care to persons who are infected. We indeed pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. Those persons who would have lost employment, those persons whose salaries would have been reduced, and who are struggling to make ends meet. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions, those with mental health illness, those with substance abuse problems, those who find themselves being the victim of emotional, physical abuse of any kind, those who feel marginalized within our society in any way. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for all branches of our military. We say a special prayer this morning for those BDF soldiers who were involved in that accident last evening on their way back from the funeral of Micah Miguel. We pray for the family of Miss Hill who died and we pray for healing and recovery for those who were injured as well as for comfort and peace for these families. We continue to remember and pray for the government, for those in positions of public trust and authority, our Governor General, our Prime Minister, the members of government, the leader of the opposition, all persons in positions of government rule and decision making and policies. We pray for our churches. We pray for our church leadership. We pray for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19 or who are involved in any form of humanitarian aid. We remember the members of the international community, those most severely affected by this pandemic. We pray for those who are affected by the ravages of war, those who are facing any type of violence or any type of abuse in their various situations. 
we remember and pray for those who have experienced loss due to wars or loss due to natural disaster. We continue to pray for God's protection and provision over each and every one of them. We pray for protection for ourselves during this hurricane season. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercession by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. We pray, Almighty and eternal God, that you would sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for bearing with me this morning. That electrical surge that we had that took out my light earlier caused my computer to glitch and things have been all over the place. I am hoping that it came out the way it was supposed to. But it is still a blessing and a privilege, even with difficulties, especially in the midst of difficulties, to be able to have an opportunity to praise and worship and offer God thanksgiving for the many blessings he has bestowed upon us. I want to thank you um, for joining me for morning prayer this morning. And I want to remind you of our broadcast for the remainder of the day. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, compline at evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. I want to thank those persons who joined us for Bible study yesterday as we looked at what it means to be a waiting servant for the return of our Lord. And let me tell you, let me tell you, we concluded yesterday that we are not supposed to just be idly waiting for the return of our Savior, but we should be busy working for the glory of his kingdom while we wait for his return. And we were reminded that we do not know the date or the hour. And because we do not know the date or the hour, we must constantly be on guard and ready. Yes, sir. Hmm. But all of that said, it is a beautiful thing to be able to serve mm -hmm. Almighty God. And I thank you for your continual support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize as we try to do exactly that. We're going to close with our prayer of dedication this morning, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet a light to our parts and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off with one this morning entitled Awake, Awake, Fling Off the Night. And that's exactly what we have to do. We are called to be children of light. Mm -hmm. We are called to be bearers of light. Hmm? It's time for us to wake up out of this darkness of sleep. Yes? And to shine our light for Christ. Fling off the light. Fling off the night. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day, a blessed and beautiful weekend. And I look forward to seeing you bright and early Monday morning, same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now. Awake, awake, Sing for